Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. Like Sunlight's curriculum offerings, we will explore homeschooling through the lens of a literature-based christ Center education. Join us for everything you might be interested in, for organizing your homeschool, connecting with others, and details on literature-based learning, and maybe a few sneak peeks. Hi, I'm Jonna with Chat with Sunlight, and I am here today with my friend, Catherine Van, and I have asked her to come and talk to us about being a foster mom while homeschooling and using sunlight. Did you know that in 2002, childwelfare.gov site says that we have over 407,000 children in the welfare system. And out of those 407, 34 are able to be placed in a home with relatives or their kin, and which is great news. Bad news means 66% are in the system trying to be in foster homes of one kind or another. Um, Catherine here has some children and some experience, and I would like for her to introduce herself, and then we have a couple of questions for her. Catherine, could you? Yes. Hey, uh, my name is Catherine Van. I'm a homeschool mom of about eight years, and I'm excited to be here. Catherine, can you tell me how many kids you have at this time? Yes. Currently, we have six kids. I have three biological kids. We've adopted one, and we are waiting to adopt two more. And how long have you had the the one that you've adopted, as well as the others, when did they come into your home? The one that we have adopted, she came into our home in October of 2020, and we adopted her about one year later in October 2021. Uh, The other two, um, Princess P, she came into our home in April of 2020, and uh, she's been there ever since. And then her baby brother was born in October 2020. One. one that's yes math 2021 just turned one this year <laughs> i homeschool my children in math. yes yeah yes. well and i know i can say october 2021 because she and i are in a homeschool group together and we were directors of a drama that summer or that fall so i remember the little one coming in and the excitement of it and getting to hold the baby and play with him while um she had to run the practices. <laughs> yes. So um, so what is it like, Catherine, to home, be at home, homeschooling your kids and have children in the foster care system? Uh, it was an adjustment at first, for sure, because we had to make uh, room for all the extra appointments. Because when you get a foster child, when they're placed with you for the first time, you typically have to, you know, immediately get them in with a pediatrician. A lot of the times they have uh, therapies and things like that you need to get them to. You have social workers in and out of your home pretty often. So it was an adjustment. But um, I honestly couldn't imagine schooling my children any other way than homeschool and being able to uh, do foster care. So you talked about the social workers coming to visit you. Does that add a level of stress onto just trying to get school done on a day? It really does, especially because we are not typically first thing in the morning homeschoolers. We kind of get started a little later in the day. So um, there's that level of stress, even though we've never had anyone, any of our social workers be ugly about homeschooling or anything. But when they are coming at 9 a.m. for a visit and my kids are all in their pajamas not doing school, I'm like, oh, let's let's pretend. (laughs) (laughs) It's the faux school time. (laughs) Let's go read a book. And we know as homeschoolers, we can do school any time of the day. We're Mm -hmm. not subjected to the eight o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon, must be doing school, sitting at a desk all day for our kids. We can expand on that and do, you know, field trips and we can, if their interests are outside and it's botany, we can be outside looking at plants and at the same time, just enjoy playing in the backyard. And then we can also send our kids to the backyard to play on the trampoline or, um, all the varied things, walk the dog. And so they learned a little husbandry and stuff as they're going (laughs) along. So tell me what support did you receive in our community for your kids? There are several churches in our community that have foster care closets, and those are an amazing ministry. Uh, Whenever we've gotten a new child or just if they are changing sizes, I can contact one of those awesome ladies and they can uh, get what we need. And um, if and if they don't have what we need, they are always able to reach out to just people in their church and get it really quickly for us. Do you find that it's easier? Is there an easy way to find foster closets other than just word of mouth? Typically, um, 
people at DHR know and have a list going. And then, yes, definitely just getting plugged in with other foster parents in the community is the best way to find out about those kind of things. I was wondering if the DHR people would have a list to like say, oh, you can use these people. Or was that a secret they kept? <laughs> so let me ask you, I know you're married. Yes. Is your husband 100% on board with being a foster parent? Yes, absolutely. He is. He, uh, his grandparents fostered when he was growing up. So he got to see that kind of, his grandparents fostered when he was growing up. So he already kind of had that in his mind that it was something he wanted to do as well. So this is a generational thing, even in your family, you kind of married into it. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about closing your doors for foster care? We have thought about uh, closing after these two adoptions, at least for a little while, until we kind of get the youngest a little bit older, just to kind of let everyone adjust for a little bit. So one of the things that she has not said, Princess P is actually pretty much the same age as her youngest biological kid. So she not only has the added, it's a foster child and there's issues, um, just becoming a new family. She basically has twins running around and they are, how old are they, Catherine? They're five. <laughs> so, and what level are they doing? They are doing K. So they're doing K together. And um, Princess P is, I love her. I, when I see her on the weekend, she's always Miss John or Miss John. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so it's a added doing extra with them. Um, she is young enough here in the state of Alabama that she does not need to be in school yet. So foster system is allowing them to keep her at home and that's not a problem. Right. Yeah. Um, so Catherine, let tell me one thing. If you could change one thing, either in your home or in the process or the system of foster care, what would that one thing be? And not, obviously you can't say, there would never need to be a need for foster kids because we know that that's not going to be the case because God even talks to us in the Bible about our orphans and taking care of them. And that's pretty much what you're doing. They may not be actual orphans and some of them are, but they are orphaned in the fact that their parents cannot step up and take care of them at this time for one reason or another. And we're not going to fault the parents at this point. We're going to love the kids, but what would be one thing you'd want to see change or Put in your own system? I think definitely um, just more of a voice for foster parents within DHR. Um, typically, we, I mean, we don't have a lot of say. We're there for the children, which that's what we signed up for. We want to be there to support them in every way possible. Uh, but just when it gets time for big decisions, just to feel like we are heard as the people who are with the kids in and out every day, 24 hours a day. So when I used to live in the state of Kentucky and now in Alabama, I believe there's an organization called CASA. Are they involved with your foster kids? They are not, but I have heard great things and there is definitely a need for people that's a volunteer position. So there's mm -hmm. definitely a need for people to step up and uh, help with that. Yes. So what is the hardest part of being a foster and what is the hardest part of having foster children in your home? The hardest part, I think, is definitely just trying to be 100% their parent, and also for some of the children we've had, share that with their actual biological parents who are fighting to get them back, and then also co-parenting with the HR. Yeah, I think that's our, <laughs> um, I would, and I, I've seen it in your post, and I've seen it in many of my other foster family friends, don't say that fast, um, <laughs> letting your kids go. Yes, definitely. I find that that is the most heartbreaking. And for me, even as a friend of a friend, basically, just to see it happen and know that their hearts are breaking. Um, Catherine, is there anything you would like to encourage any homeschool moms that are thinking of fostering? Uh, knowing that not all foster organizations, DHRs will allow kids to be homeschooled. It's different from state to state, from county to county from agent to agent, I think, um, what would you want to tell a homeschool mama that's thinking that she could open her doors up? Definitely just don't let the fact that you homeschool uh, discourage you from uh, pursuing foster care. Find someone local to you that does it because I promise you they're there. People are way more into homeschooling now than they used to be. And, um, and there are lots of resources out there to help you get plugged in with other foster parents that are willing to 
kind of guide you and talk to you about what you might need to know about your local foster care system. Thank you, Catherine, for coming today. I appreciate you. Um, it is February, I believe, that when this is going to get to air. I had hoped to try to make it right on Valentine's Day so we could share the love. But um, we're going to make it on a good Friday because Fridays is awesome. So we are, um, thank you for coming. Um, I'm glad to have you here. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. You can always email me at connections at sunlight.com or you can find us on Facebook or at the app. Thank you for joining us today. Do you have an idea for a podcast topic or do you want to chat with Sunlight on an upcoming episode? Email us at connections at sunlight.com.